Hi everyone, this is Jason here from Nathaniel School of Music. Let's learn some blues in this lesson. So I'm going to teach you a left-hand bass blues pattern very much derived and inspired from a bass instrument like a bass guitar or a trombone if you play, if, you, if you've seen a trombone player. And the right hand is going to do some really simple stuff on the dominant seventh chord. But how I'm going to explain this lesson is I will teach you a bass line which I think anyone can do it's a very very simple passage all you need to know is know your major scale and i'm going to guide you along with that and the right hand is going to basically play a chord in the blues progression okay so first off there's going to be some theory so stick around till the end of the lesson there's going to be a lot of patterns and so on but i'll first have to talk about some theory the scale the chords the formation and all that okay so let's get cracking before we do it'd be great if you can hit that subscribe button turn on that bell for regular notifications let's go so the blues progression i've chosen b flat bl blues or you can say the key of b flat for this illustration in the b flat scale what you really need to know for the blues or anything is the progression ends up being over 12 bars so let me run you through the chords it'll be chord number one that's b flat major and how we play blues chords is we play them all as dominant seventh chord so instead of just playing it as b flat major we go b flat seventh not b flat major seventh b flat dominant seventh so to do to get a dominant seventh sound you play the major chord and then you find a flat seven so the flat seven as i've explained in a lot of other lessons in the past can be formed by playing the triad then finding the root or i like to st do the octave and then do a minus two that gives you the dominant seventh vibe now if you know your inversions you can play the same b flat major chord this way and then you get the seventh chord the seventh uh, flat note just remember that for b flat seventh the seventh is a flat which is a flat seven so you just need to know your triad b flat major and then add the a flat to it so if you like this inversion of b flat fair enough you get it there if you like this inversion of b flat fair enough get it there okay so b flat major you've got yourself all the inversions same story you need to do with the four chords so with blues remember the one chord is important the four chord is important and the five is important so in the b flat major scale you have seven notes b flat b flat c d e flat f g f b flat b flat a g f e flat d c you have all these seven notes so you need to consider the chords formed out of the one the four E flat and the 5 which is F and the uh, the eventual chord would be B flat dominant 7th then you want to work your way through the E flat chord E flat dominant 7 so where's the flat 7 of E flat the D flat is that right and then we do F major whichever inversion you whack it down and then you ask yourself what is the flat 7 of F major which happens to be E flat so I'd leave the inversion forming to you you could probably pause the video practice your inversions or better still you could play along with the lesson we have everything written down as always in most of our YouTube videos with my handwritten notes you can get yourselves a copy pause the video head over to patreon and that will also help our channel grow okay guys so moving forward so the right hand will play the 12 bar progression but you need to know your 12 bars so again see the notes it will be um, roman one or the first chord played four times so one second bar remember it's a seventh chord third bar fourth bar so when the fourth bar ends b flat is done and dusted then what do we do we then move to the e flat dominant seventh chord which is played twice so Roman 1, the 1 chord is played 4 times, 4 bars. Roman 4 will be played twice. So B flat, B flat, B flat, B 
B flat and now we go to E flat E flat which is the 4 twice and then back to to our luck we come back to B flat B flat and then the F only once of F F7 so F once E flat once and then end on the one. Now there are a lot of ways people manipulated a little bit in the blues progression. I am proposing it's one uh, twice at the end. So B flat, B flat. So the whole thing again. You can even consider playing the roots of the chords in your bass register. B flat, B flat, B flat. B flat and now we go to E flat dominant seventh back to B flat twice and then the F and then the E flat B flat repeat the B flat and that's the first thing you would need to practice if you haven't done that already practice that first and now moving on to the actual part of our discussion which is to bring the left hand and right hand together so we start with a left hand bass pattern and i've done a lot of blues lessons in the past and to a point that we now have a playlist uh, on the youtube channel you can just go to our the the channel page and search for all the blues lessons we've done or if you're finding that a bit tricky you can go to our website nathanielschool.com free tutorials and you can filter it out to blues and you have a lot of blues instruction there and rock and roll for those of you who like the more jumpy version of blues okay so coming back to the the movement so each of my chords so if i play b flat dominant 7th it's going to kind of have a bass line which will be something like that that's the elaborate one it's played over the 12 bar okay now we are not going to start with that elaborate version i'm going to take you step by step so uh, what you need to also do now is in your books if you're writing this down write down the notes of each of the chords so then your right hand becomes something which can be like a muscle memory you just feel it and go with the right hand because you need to pay a lot of attention to your left hand in this concept or in this chapter wherein your right hand just becomes a muscle memory thing or in autopilot so practice your right hand even though this is about the re- left hand practice the right hand now the left hand i'm going to just show you one bar of data and that one bar is going to keep growing as we do our lesson so the first i think version which all of you can try and this requires the knowledge of intervals so you need to map out your b flat root and the first process will be to play 1 3 5 6 of the b flat root and that's one bar 1 3 5 6 1 3 5 6 okay in terms of swaras i'm doing sa ga pa dha sa i advise you to sing it as well pam 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 you could do pam 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 or you could do b flat d f g if you like that a sa ga pa dha those are the interval names in india at least so that's one bar so if you have four bars of b flat you will be going second third fourth what's next e flat e flat comes up so then you need to take the e flat root transpose this to the e flat root and then go for it now you may be arguing do you transpose it with respect to the b flat major scale no that's not how blues works so you take a chord b flat and whatever line you play is based on that root so b flat major third perfect fifth major sixth so if you go to e flat then from the e flat true root you do e flat its major third 
its perfect fifth and its major six which is 1 3 5 6 6 e flat g b flat c so that happens twice and then we come back to b flat so when you're doing the 12 bar form my advice to you would be to do it line by line so first master line 1 only b flat super easy say so repeat let me slow that down slow it down and then we go to e flat which is the second line played twice back to b flat played twice okay let's just do those first eight of the 12 bars again b flat to b flat to do b flat b flat and e flat e flat you need to know when that change is coming right b flat b flat and then the f chord which i haven't taught you yet f super easy f a c d 1 3 5 6 do da da e flat back to e flat and end on b flat and your right hands playing the chords of this bass line so a normal piano rhythm pattern what tends to happen is we play the roots of the chords in our left hand we don't play a bass groove we don't play a bass line and that's what the blues is here to teach you develop your left hand more like a bass instrument for all the funky stuff and all of all of the grooves which you would want to play emulating sort of like a drum and bass concept here okay and the right hand will be for comping the chords or playing melodies and so on and so forth okay let's do that again the whole 12 bar second b flat third b flat fourth again b flat changing to e flat E flat B flat B flat last line F E flat all dominant chords in the right hand Okay this is the core variation which I'm sure you guys can all do if you're having an issue playing the dominant seven chords in your right hand don't worry you can even play a major third like normal triads in the right right But if you can bring in that dominant vibe, it sounds a lot more uh, heavier and epic. So, coming back to the left hand, let's grow the left hand by adding one more ingredient. Okay, and step by step, this is all there in my notes. So you may want to get yourselves a copy of this in the link in the description. So you go. That's your original one now. So we create, we divide that last crotchet or quarter note into two eighth notes. So that will be. So what was once now becomes. So one bar will be. Okay, with the right hand a little bit. You can even hold your chord in the initial stages until you get used to the left hand. Now, don't forget to count twelve bars. I'm now in E flat, the fifth, sixth, and now the seventh of B flat, eighth B flat, F nine bar, E flat tenth bar. B flat 11 B flat 12 You could also make your right hand a bit more choppy you can go 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and we also call that the charleston rhythm pattern a very idiomatic rhythmic phrase which a lot of blues and jazz musicians use so it's at the 1 and 2 and 3 One and two, and you could also play the Charleston in a displaced form. You can go one and two and three and four and one and two and four and one and two and three 
right? I have notated this as well. You could check it out in the notes. And and two and three and four and one and displaced normal. Okay, now that has to somehow happen over our bass line. There we go. Now back, back to, and now F, E flat. as you gain more confidence ultimately you need to swing this dumpa 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 you need to feel that swing very important dumpa 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 you don't want to do dang a dang a dang a dang a dang a dang a dang that will be more uh, rock and roll i guess and you'll want to play that faster so for blues swing dunk 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 de de dump so you may want to also jam along or practice this scenario with a few drum tracks a few backing tracks or a drummer friend if you have one or anyone who plays the blues it'll always be nice to jam with someone this is a jamming genre okay so let's upgrade our left hand even further we started with that then we did very cool that pick up at the end now what if i make this one bar phrase into a two bar phrase let's see what happens there okay so what did i do there 1 3 5 6 7 flat 6 5 3 so that made it into two bars pum 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 so you could combine it with the other variation tum tum te do rum pum pum pe tum pum pum pe do rum pum again invest your time only on the b flat triad or the b flat seventh chord and then make your way to e flat once you've written it down of course f now that there's an interesting case with f because f has only one bar so you can't really do the whole double bar thing you can't you won't have time for that so f e flat b flat So whenever you have two bars for a chord, then you do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven flat. Don't forget it's seven flat, not pum 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 pa de. Don't ever play the seven major in blues. People will get really angry with you. Okay, actually, even for rock music in general, the seven is flattened while playing most of the. the genres we actually like come to think of it okay so variation 3 i hope that was clear let's do that again and back and half of f when we try one or two final twists to this thing okay so two eighth notes one at the end of bar 1 and the other at the beginning of bar 2 yeah so 1 2 3 4 and 1 and 2 and yeah 1 2 3 Four and one and two and three and four again. Two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Okay. Tum 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 te re rum pa din tum 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 te re rum pa re rum te re rum pa re rum pam. More eighth notes.
Okay, I'd like to leave you with one more cool thing which I keep doing for some reason. Uh, you go. So that's more like a triplet run. Let me try and break that down. One, three, five, six, five, seven flat, five, six. Now the triplet comes in. That's five, six, five. That's three flat three. You should do it a bit more like faster, so then it becomes more subtle. You don't do it on F. Right, guys, so that was 12 bar blues, left hand bass line, which I think you can pretty much play an entire gig with just this with just this bass line and uh, the right hand as i told you earlier plays that more of that charleston rhythm vibe and a good way to practice the blues especially the right hand in general even with the ba the bass line snap at the two and the four a one two three four a one two so don't go one two you won't feel the blues if you go like this okay so you go one two Three, four, a one. Now it opens up to. So feel that vibe of two and four. That'll really get the blues pumping. Having said that, I've talked a lot about this stuff in great detail in the blues playlist. It's in the description or you can find it on the channel or on our website somewhere. So do continue the blues study. And uh, if you already do play the blues, if you've started your journey, do let me know in the comments what you'd like me to teach or what are the areas which you're finding difficult in this particular genre. I will try and research it. I'm from India, so it's not natural to play this, uh, but I've been fortunate to play with a lot of blues musicians along the way in various parts of the south wherever i've gigged and I, I i really think that blues is a genre which shapes you as a music person you know it if you can play the blues even if you're a like a like a death metal musician or something like that or a a musician who likes playing you know uh, r and b or those sort of genres you should always come from the blues. It's the most influential contemporary genre. By contemporary, I mean music after the classical time. So if you can play the blues well, if you can count the 12 bars, it's a great discipline to then play other forms of music. So most of the bands I've played with have been fortunate that we all are blues lovers. So sometimes we'd start like a hard rock rehearsal with slow blues, BB King style blues. Why we do that is A, we love it, we enjoy it and B, to get us into the vibe and also to know each other better. Blues is another genre where you can coordinate with four or five musicians in a room and it's a way to kind of chat with each other it's a good way to communicate this genre okay guys hope you found the lesson useful again this is jason zach from nathaniel school do give the video a, a like which is that thumbs up thing there leave us a comment share the video with your musician friends and do consider following us on patreon we have also members videos options on youtube you can also consider uh, joining an actual course with, with me and the other faculty at Nathaniel. You can head over to our site, fill up a simple form and our team will reach you. Cheers.